All right, here we go. All right, Short Box Nation, today we'll be taking a departure from our normal comic spotlights and interviews to catch up with the latest comic news and pop culture developments that have made headlines this year so far. So some of the news we're going to cover today is, is old, some is recent from this week, and some might just be news to you, all right? This might be the first time that you're hearing it. Okay, that one. Uh, first time that you're hearing it. Uh, sorry. Uh, now, you would think for a year that we're only 15 days in at the time of this recor recording, that would be a quiet one, that we would start 2023 with, without much to talk about. But oh, contraire, my friend. We've got things to talk about. Ooh. Thank you, John Stewart. We have a lot to talk about. So I encourage you to check out the timestamps listed in the show notes if you want to hear about a specific topic or maybe you're looking for us to talk about a certain thing. Check out the show notes. I've got all of the topics we'll be talking about today listed there. Um, and before we begin, before we officially begin, I would be remiss if I didn't shout out a few people that help us make this possible. Po uh, if I didn't shout out a few people that help make this possible, like our incredible sponsors, Collective Con and Gotham City Limit. You heard about Collective Con at the top of the show, and you'll hear about our favorite comic shop later on. But you cannot, we can't talk about the reason we're able to keep this show strong uh, and, and not mention our loyal and badass Patreon community. These are our friends, family, and diehard fans who believe in us so much that they actually invest real mm. money into the show to make sure that we keep it going and keep it growing. I, I, I don't know, Ed. I, could you call them delusional for believing in us? I call them the real fans is what I call them. Woo! Mm. Come on, it's man. A challenge. The new year, Ed. new challenge. There we go. So <laughs> is the challenge bought or no negativity when it comes to the people that pay us? <laughs> no, they're awesome. <laughs> All right. Regardless of, of their mental state or questionability, mm. uh, that's, I, I do agree with you, Ed. That is real love. The money still spends the same way, no matter how crazy they are. <laughs> money still spends the same. You're right, Ed. Mm -hmm. Regardless of their mental state, that is real love right there. And and for the amount of bonus content that we give our patrons, I think I think our patrons are, are getting a steal, you know. But but I'm happy to provide them so much extra content. I'm a little disappointed that more of you listening right now aren't throwing us a measly dollar or two every month. All right, I get it. Eggs are expensive as hell right now. Oh my god! But short box content <laughs> is priceless. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I guess I can't complain too much because we, we, I'm sorry. I can't complain too much about um, our, our, our numbers and all that because uh, this year we started out stronger. We, we got some new members joining our Patreon that I'm really excited to welcome and make a big deal about. So starting with Chris Hacker from the Oblivion Bar podcast, Whoa. we'll give him a round of applause. Chris was on the Best of Year episode we put out a few weeks ago, and, and he completely surprised me with his membership. Right after we got done recording, he went ahead and signed up for the Patreon. And all I got to say is... If an upstanding podcast like the Oblivion Bar is supporting mm -hmm. the show, well, you know there's a case of the fucking crazies going around, right? I think mm -hmm. he's inhaled some Joker gas or something. Mm. Um, because, yeah. But anyways, Chris, appreciate you uh, joining the Patreon. Thank you for your support. Uh, second up, it wasn't just Chris and, and another podcast. You know, and, and, sorry. It wasn't just Chris that made the best financial decision of his life. Let's go to give it up for, for some good friends of the short box, right? Phil and Eric of the Wait For It podcast. Also became new members of the Patreon community. Those are two of the best dudes I personally know making some great podcast content. So thank hmm. you, um, Phil and Eric. And last but not least, all right, our, our newest Patreon uh, community member is Chad Landenberg. Right? Oh. Long time friend of the show. All right? oh. he's, he's, he's been, he was a guest way back when. Um, uh, long time supporter, long time friend, and I'm so happy to so have So what you're Chad. saying is about time. <laughs> About time. And you must have read my mind. I, wasn't, I didn't have it in the script, but it, I think it was in the first draft. About time, people. About time. Nah, big Appreciate shout it, outs to Chris. Big shout mm -hmm. outs to Phil and Eric of the Wait For It podcast. And big shout outs to Chad. Thank you guys a thousand times over. Um, and we appreciate you, seriously. All jokes aside, we, we love you guys and appreciate you. If you're a listener right now that, that wants, you know, it's feeling a little left out. It's a little jealous. Like, I want some fucking praise and attention. Uh, and, you know, and, and if you're ready. I guess the, the real question you got to ask yourself is, are you ready to take your support and short box experience to the next level? Because if the answer is yes, which is the only correct answer, you should be joining our Patreon community, all right? You can do so by clicking the link in the show notes or going to shortboxjacks.com to see what we got going on. With the sales pitch out the way, with the introductions and, and appreciation out of the way, 
It's time to take a look at what's been going on this year in the world of comics and related pop culture so far. Shaggy, you are our guest. It's been a minute since the fans got to hear your voice. So I want you to go ahead and kick us off with some bad news. All right, You, you decided oh. to come with some like rather sad news. All right, kind of broke my heart reading this headline. <laughs> what you got for us today? Okay, first off, before I do it, before the uh, J.R. Smith of the short box community uh, <laughs> do this, I got I to gotta do it right. First off, I got the jersey on with, with the... With the official short box. Oh, the patch. Sydney, with the patch on. We got to throw that beast on oh. real oh. quick. That's saying a lot because I'm sure you got, I mean, it's probably warm in that house and you're throwing on that 20 pound uh, uh, comic book uh, Fiend Club uh, jacket. Yes, sir. Shout out to the boys. Shout out to the South. The South got something to say always. But it actually is kind of cold in here because <laughs> mama ain't trying to have no, <laughs> mama ain't trying to have these heats on while she ain't home. Yeah. And I just, I'm just a polar bear. But let's get yeah. into it, fellas. I love that. Let me I ask love- you. I love that no oh, yeah. matter how old you get, you know, you could be, you know, in, in your 30s. You know, you could be a grown-ass man paying your own bills. When you're at your parents' house, you don't touch that thermostat, no matter how <laughs> Absolutely cold Absolutely not, bro. They, they done trained me right <laughs> from day one, bro. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> not, bro. Um, but, fellas, I, obviously, yes, you're right. The, it's kind of somber news. But uh, first off, I want to open it up and say, uh, what do y'all think about Nick Cage, man? Do y'all like Nick Cage? Y'all mess with Nick Cage? The y'all best. Y'all, 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 the he's fuck, a fucking yeah. unicorn. I think he's like mm-hmm. a unicorn in Hollywood. Like, you just don't believe someone like him exists. And then, you know, but it's hard to deny him. Bro, the renaissance that this man has been on <laughs> as of late <laughs> Talk about it. is, like, insane to me, bro. Like, yeah, he it's, paid, it's he paid no... all them taxes. He can do some <laughs> good stuff now. <laughs> he's not on the run anymore. He's not on the run. <laughs> nah, he he been chilling, man. He's been chilling. He's been doing his movies. He's at that one movie uh, that was kind of like a mockumentary of him. Oh, uh, that recently uh, came out with the unbearable uh, weight of talent or something like that. Yeah, the unbearable weight of talent, and then that also has uh, your boy Man, like Mando in it. Uh, Pedro he, Pascal, with that movie, yeah. yeah, Pedro Pascal, and then uh, obviously he's he's got the new he's playing Dracula in the new movie uh, Renfield coming out later this year, which absolutely looks amazing. But uh, one movie that most of our people are looking forward to and that gets a sequel later this year is uh, Into the Spider Verse. Mm-hmm. And he played a character in the original, in the first movie, as uh, Spider-Man Noir. Unfortunately, um, in the newer sequel that's coming out, uh, Into the Multiverse, uh, across the Spider-Verse, excuse me, uh, he will not be returning as Sony uh, has decided not to bring him back. Now, my thoughts with that, if, uh, first off, is like. It, to, I, I just to play devil's advocate, they probably had no idea that Nick Cage would be what he is right now because with animation it takes time and you know everything else and or who knows because it is Sony and uh, just like other movie studios, they do not make the best decisions. Looking at you, Warner Brothers, mm-hmm. um, and you know they decided not to bring him back. Now, do we know that uh, Spider-Man Noir is in the movie currently? I'm pretty sure he is, but I don't know how big of a role he had has had or is going to have in the newer movie when it drops. I don't think there's any trace of, of him in the at least the teaser trailer that's been put out. Yet. I didn't see it. I was going to ask y'all if y'all seen the trailer, and I've mm-hmm. watched it a couple times, and I have not seen anything else, but I get hyped for seeing everybody. I got As soon as I'm like, okay, I'm here to look for Spider-Man Noir, I see like bombastic Batman, and I get mm-hmm. geeked out all over again. So I'm like, okay, I'm not doing my job. But uh, when talked about, when approached about it uh, from Screen Rant, which I'm getting this article from IGN uh, from their comic site, uh, Screen Rant, he reports to him, and he says, uh, you have to ask Sony. I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, no one's spoken to me. No one's spoken to me about it. Ask them. I don't know. I really don't. Uh, I wish they would. I love Spider-Man Noir, too. I I think it's a great character. Uh, Spider-Man's the coolest superhero. And then you combine that with uh, James Cagney and Humphrey Beauregard and Edward G. Robinson, and come on, mm-hmm. it's a great character. Of course, those were the inspirations he did when he became Spider-Man Noir. And I'm like. You want to talk about fumbling the bag, man. Mm. You, you got to fumble the bag. Sony's fumbling the bag, dog, because how do you not uh, take <laughs> what he's been doing and add him right back to the movie? Granted, yeah. Spider-Man Noir is not one of the bigger characters, but it was one of the most noticeable characters Look, and the way he played. He had one of the best lines to me. Sometimes I let matches burn down on my fingertips just to feel something, anything. Like, yo, see, yo. yeah, that's the most edgelord as that was the most edgelord <laughs> as line. And I'm like, yo, that's the one. That's it. 
Come That's on. it. They're not going to give us more of that. What? Dog, yeah, you're right. No. They drop in the bag. They, they, they fumble in the bag on that, man. And that kind of hurts my soul, dog, because, like, again, <laughs> it wasn't a big role that he was in, man. But, like, at the same time, bro, like, he's – granted, could you sit there and say he's probably going to cost more for us to put on if he's going to have, like, five sentences? Like, why would we pay that? But I'm pretty sure he would have came back with no issues and not asked for, yeah. like, a crazy amount of money. Because he seems cameo, like that. right? Like, like yeah, even something. if he's not going to have an actor, I get that, like, we're expanding the the um, the um roster and lineup for this movie exponentially. I mean, you got Oscar Isaac in it now, uh, mm. Issa Rae, um, uh, Ma- Jason Schwartzman playing uh, The Spot. I get that we're expanding the, sto- um, the roster and, you know, the story's focus is going to be on new characters. But the fact that it sounds like, at least right now, that he won't even maybe make a... Uh, I think if they if, if he's in the movie, maybe it sounds like he won't even have any lines, which to me would be a disservice. You got Nick Cage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you ain't going to have any lines, it sounds like? None. Yeah, and you're saying it's a money thing. They didn't even put it on the table to him to turn down. Nah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, they, didn't even ask the man. Real quick, real quick. Do you think... <laughs> this is just how my stupid brain works. Do you think the casting director is like reading this article like, and he's looking over at his like to do list. No, I forgot. Something. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's like, he, he's like, he's like, fuck, man. He's like, he was like, he's number, like, fuck, man. Yeah, it was like task like, number twenty nine hundred, and that, he did you know up to nine hundred. Yeah, and the fact that he's a Shit. legit fan too. He's not just a dude yeah. playing a part. He's a fan. He has those comics he had to sell and that. Mm-hmm dinosaur skull and those castles and shit so yeah, i mean <laughs> nick cage is the most acceptable weirdo bro yeah. like i think in the community and for you to not have this to have the most the internet's most favorite weirdo yeah on board with that movie kind of hurts but fear not because there is or obviously we do know that this movie is only part one so yeah, part the, two oh, yeah, yeah. comes out in 2024 they got time so there is still a there's still hope that they can pull out make that a, list and go shit. like yo let's make that phone call <laughs> be like yo hey nick i'm so sorry bro i'm so sorry bro. <laughs> hey man please come back no nah, no nah, nick 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 we was calling we was gonna call you this month like it was on the schedule yeah, you, didn't bro. Get, you didn't get the email it went to your spam bro, folder. we called oh, you okay, man okay, and okay. went straight okay. to voicemail dog <laughs> something by calico <laughs> or something bro like we we figured you call us man no, like, exactly. you talking about you didn't you know, know we didn't know. Yeah. You know you was good. We was waiting on the call from you. We was waiting on the call back. We waiting from you, yeah. baby. Yeah. Well, we it's weird because it went from because they were even talking about doing even spinoffs with that character. So oh, wow. you go from doing from according to I what I heard about what part of Nick um Nick Cage's kind of response to it. It's like, yeah, we were part of the hmm. You know, we were supposed to do some spinoff stuff, maybe not like a full length, but, you know, maybe some shorts or a, a, an episode or something like that. Or like those cartoons they put in, you know, the beginning, yeah, like yeah. a 10 or 15 minute deal. But, yeah, it's like he's still a name, regardless of what anyone thinks of him. He's still one of the greatest actors alive. If you look at his whole yeah. Rolodex of movies, his whole his whole resume, he's still a name. He's Hollywood royalty, his, his family. He's still a guy that you want... And the guy that wants to be part of it, you know, it's, it's and you know, and the fact that you don't even put the offer on the table, it's, it's he, mind boggling and it's, but it's Sony too. So they yeah. have like kind of a history Dog, of but you, but Ed, you also know shit. that you, I and Barter know that Sony is some hoes. So they are looking <laughs> to like, they are looking to try to get any get back to say, yo, we, we messed up. We're going to do that. Cause these are the same people that put Morbius back. In theater, yeah. bro. Like, no, thought like people no liked no it because of the memes. Like, I, would, memes. I, would, I would have taken that. I would have had them take the entire Morbius budget and just given that to Nick Cage for another That's what I'm sentence. Saying, bro. Just, just do that for me. All right. Good <laughs> stuff. Thank you for kicking us off with that, Shaggy. That no problem, good. bro. All right, Ed. Let's go ahead and pass it to you. Let, let's get. Uh, let, let's look into the. Um, let's go into the the comic sphere of things. All right. You got a headline to share. Well, no, no, no. I'm sorry. We're skipping that one. I'm yeah. doing the German mm-hmm. Okay, okay, here we go, here we go. All right, Shaggy, I'm, I'm going to try to follow up to that and kind of just stick it into the, uh, the, the movie realm. Um, one of my favorite members uh, of the Avengers in MCU, our boy Was Jeremy. Really? <laughs> no, yo, look, Is he the, really, though? Uh, all right, I know that sounds like hyperbole, but... but I like but, the actor, but... but let me Is Hawkeye Cap. anybody's favorite? Yeah, well, look, I, well, well, I ain't talking about America either, the punchline. Cap. But let's be real. The <laughs> Hawkeye series made me a big fan. Right? I looked at yeah. him in a different light. All right, I, I will admit, maybe not up to that point. But if you look back at <laughs> Hawkeye's one-liners, like in Ultron, when uh, fuck, when he's like he's got the arrow point. No, first of all, his speech to Scarlet Witch in uh, Age of Ultron, fucking epic. 
And then his one liner against Quint- Quicksilver about like no one would notice. No one would notice when he's got uh, his arrow pointed at him. All right. We ha- anyways, <laughs> I will defend Hawkeye another time. Let me get to the point. Uh, Jeremy Renner did not have a so good uh, beginning to his year. Okay. Um, Jeremy Renner, a.k.a. the Avengers go-to sharpshooter, Hawkeye to most, uh, was involved in a really bad accident. Um, he was, uh, during New Year's, he was assisting to, to help a family member um, after his vehicle had broken down in, like, the snow. So Jeremy Renner goes and I guess he's got, like, this epic uh, fucking snowplow. It's like a 14,000-pound wow. uh, snowcat is the, uh, the line it is, or product that is. Um, so he, he uses a snowplow to uh, get his uh, friend's um, vehicle out of the snow. Uh, he's, he's, you know, successful in doing so. He hops out of the snowplow to take a look at things or, or talk to his family member. And all of a sudden, this fucking 14,000-pound 14, machinery starts rolling over and lands right on top of him, essentially oh, crushing him underneath it, right? Uh, he's rescued. He's, he's airlifted to the hospital. He's got to get surgery and treatment. He, he's, uh, he, he ha- I'm sorry, he suffers from... Blunt chest trauma and orthopedic injuries is the um, diagnosis that uh, the news has shared afterwards. So he's been hospitalized since like January began, and things were not looking very good for him early on. He was in the uh, ICU <laughs> for like, uh, I'm sorry, he was in the intensive care unit in critical condition um, the, the following day. I think he was, I'm sorry, he was, he was in ICU for a minute, critical, and then went to stable condition the following day. Uh, unfortunately, as of, you know, uh, January 14th, just a few days ago, uh, he's been, you know, really, he's been stable enough to share videos and messages of positive progress on his recovery process on Instagram. Um, I think it'll be a minute before we get any updates on how this yeah. might affect any future roles he had in the pipeline. Um, I tried to find out if Hawkeye season two had even been, um, announced. I, I think maybe so, or, or it's kind of unclear. It doesn't sound like filming or anything really has been, um, in the works for that. So, yeah, we might have had, I, I think it's safe to say we all probably had a maybe uneventful or just normal New Year's. And then you got Jeremy Renner losing a fight to a fucking snowplow Jeez. of all things. I don't know. Did you guys see any of the videos of him, like, in the hospital looking roughed I've up? I've seen and, the tweet where he was all fucked up and, like, saying, you know, thanks for the support and yeah. all that. But, yeah, people are putting you? up Simpsons memes like savages, like the Mr. Plow <laughs> bro, shit, yeah, the Plow no, King. Okay, yeah, that one, <laughs> Internet that one had me rolling, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i was uh it caught me by surprise because all i seen was the memes and uh just the photos of him looking rough in the yeah. hospital and i had to do research and i was like oh damn it was a fucking accident a snow accident you know uh he, he's out there having you know probably just enjoying new year's with family and you know trying to relax for the new year's and you know this happens so uh yeah i just thought he would own that you said that was his were you ta- or, or were you talking about you talk about I, I my know. news being sad, bro. Like you coming out and out doing me, <laughs> shit, shit. At least mine was like somewhat know, like well, not depressing. Well, well, look, look, like, look, 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 well, well, look. Yours doesn't have a, a clear like ending. It's still like, is Nick Cage going to be in the movie or not? We're hoping for the best. Jeremy Renner, at least on mine, he's he's on the road to recovery. He looks like he's doing better. You know, hopefully we we see him uh, in a in a movie sometime soon. So yeah, I, I will admit, Shaggy. Mine's probably sadder, you know, in the beginning, yeah. but mine's got a happy ending. Mine's well, got a happy ending. He's beat up ending. his Hawkeye in the comic. He can just come <laughs> back, bro, he all bandaged up and shit. Bro, he looked like a Titans fan on Moncrief, bro. Like, that's how bad it was, bro. Like, that was a oh. very, that was a very wow. hyper Jacksonville joke, and I appreciate you for that. Of course. I had to do it, bro. I had to do it. Only only people who live, only oh, people who no. know. But, like, hey, yo, but, like, when I saw it, when I heard about it, I'm like, no. Nah. Cause like that's a of course, big no piece one of thinks of, to follow, dude. Him. No one thinks about like how they how they would leave this mortal coil, but like that's the last shit you want to go out on on a fucking snowplow, bro. Because at first I'm like I'm not gonna lie, let me let me be real. I'm thinking mathematically, how the fuck was that even possible, bro? Because I'm thinking like a snowplow is like it's gotta suck you in and shit. Like I could be wrong. Because I don't even I'm, know what I'm one fl- looks like. I'm Florida. I'm saying fucking Florida, bro. I don't, <laughs> I don't even know what, know what one looks like. like. I'm like, yo, I'm thinking. It's I'm, thinking it's one, I'm thinking it's one. I'm thinking it's a zamboni, right? like a zamboni, bro, like in the hockey games. <laughs> bro, I'm thinking it's one of them shits that I'm thinking, dog. I had to compute and try to think of that shit like it's like a fucking edger that you use in the front yard, but it's like right, it's like right. almost like you. Put, that's like a tank. Oh, shit, shit, shit. Uh, yeah, I, I went ahead and uh, hopped on Google. Ed can see my screen. Dude, oh, look how oh, big wow, this it's like shit a tank. is. Yeah. Type in snowcat vehicle, Shaggy. It's this got treads on it. This is big as fuck. And I mean, uh, you know, I, I guess what's scary is that 
you know how unstable i mean it, like you said we're, we're floridians like we don't yeah. the, the concept of snow is still like strange to us right like the fact <laughs> that snow can be so unstable that it could roll over something this heavy that's you wild. know and his luck was so bad that oh, he was standing nah. right in the exactly shaggy you seeing that it's a tank. oh nah, bro it's a tank bro yeah. it bro did bro, they take it and worse, like destroy bro. it did they like take the snow plot of the junkyard and scrap it <laughs> for bad, killing hawkeye bad snow cat bad snow cat <laughs> bro yeah. how bro like this is even crazier because i'm at least thinking it's like hand push no buddy driving hand push. Jacqueline, bro <laughs> the shaggy. I'm thinking it's hand push. Hey, yo, shaggy, shaggy this it's is like a, one of those floor waxers in walmart bro, this, is high key, bro. This, is, this is a fucking a hollywood celebrity what at the, least thought it was a zamboni he's got an automatic I thought I, I at least thought hey, you had to drive it. <laughs> at least yeah. you said, hey, I'm, I'm gonna be real, bro. I don't know what these dudes <laughs> doing because people could be different. My, like, matter of fact, why you ain't pay nobody to go do the snow shit for you? Yeah, you got I money. Guess, uh, no, wait, wait. He, got that Disney money. He's got the hero in him, man. He saw that that's his family so why, member was, so, was in trouble. So me, vehicle, that's what I'm saying. I got, what, I got a family and friend that's trapped in the snow. I'm Hawkeye. I gotta live up to the name. <laughs> Bro, I've been that's what I'm saying. So, 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 I'm, so I'm wrong. I'm wrong thinking he can't put hero and push that shit with his forearms and shit. You do all them fucking workouts. He's not the whole. You got the strength. Bro. All right, all right. Not, not to continue to Shoot dog some on, fire on, on, on a, that snow. Not to dog on it. Continue to dog <laughs> on another man's bad luck. I did find it kind of like ironic that the human. You know, the, the the only real guy in the Avengers, right? The one without powers. All he's got is you know a stick and an arrow. Gets taken down by something like so every you know it's like oh, if, how's Scarlett if, Johansson doing? Is she all right, <laughs> bro? Well, she's yeah. invincible for like, that last like, movie. And Ed, you brought you brought this up, and, <laughs> and this is what I what I was just getting at is, at first you read that headline, and if you replace Jeremy Renner with, with just Hawkeye, it sounds like some shit that would have happened in the Matt Fraction yeah. run, right? The, like the Russian dudes like yeah, rolled it over, like on. hit him over with a snowcat, you know, a snowplow, bro, bro. Yeah, it, it, of course, it, it would be Hawkeye to have this this news happen yeah. fresh out the year, which which Oof. sucks. But I, I say all that to bring up to to really celebrate the fact that he he is doing he's better, be good. that he's going to yeah. be fine, hopefully, and you know his his road recovery is speedy and, and good. Um, to to you know to really kind of celebrate and, and shine a light on our guy Jeremy Renner. I just want to hear from you two very quickly. Outside of the MCU, what is your favorite Jeremy Renner role or movie that he's been in? Shaggy, That's, you want to take that? Oh. Absolutely not, because I ain't. I don't follow that man like that. <laughs> Hansel, <laughs> don't put Hansel me on the Gretel. spot, goddamn it! Wait, wait, I, I, I'm just. You gonna Hansel say Hansel Gretel? Gretel. He was wasn't, he, wasn't he in one of them Bourne movies at one point, or am I wrong? He was supposed uh, to be the Legacy. newborn. Yeah, he was in. Uh, um, uh, yeah, he was supposed Jason to be the Born newborn. Legacy. Okay, I'm gonna say that. movie thing. It was pretty no good. Cap. I mean, I'm Grant, it don't it don't compare, but I mean, to, no. you know, the uh, Matt Damon joins, but <laughs> Bourne Legacy was pretty decent. I will admit. Yeah, I'm. I'll say that. Damn, I'm surprised. He's in a Mission Impossible, too. Yes, yes, he was. Yeah, he is in uh, Mission Impossible, bro. Shaggy, I'm surprised with your ultra hood ass that you ain't say the town with your gangsta ass. Bro, so, like, come on, bro. If I want to watch he the, was town, great bro, in the I town, can Look, I'm going to watch. It's like, if I want to watch the town, I'll just watch, <laughs> set, it, I'll just watch uh, set it off. I'll watch Set It Off, bro. That's, that's, that's the hood version of the town, bro. I ain't. Come on now. Right. Absolutely not, dog. Come on. I'll also man, give. But uh, I know the town um, is a good one, though. Yeah, he, he did good in that one, and I'll also give a uh, um, a shout out to him in Tag. He he was in that movie oh, Tag, yeah. which was, he was which, in Tag. was a lot of fun, a lot of fun, yeah. and Arrival too, which was a little you know a little dry, a little bit, but um, I thought him playing a scientist was like a fresh, um, you know, he, he played a good scientist. It was like, oh, Yo, that's okay, crazy. I remember seeing scientist. Tag in the airport, like when I was on a plane, bro. I was oh, that's like, a, okay, that is movie that is fun. such a prime. That is a prime <laughs> air, airplane movie. Yeah, you know, dog. Tag is not a movie you go spend money to see in theater. It's like, I'm going to catch down the next Jet Blue play. Oh, yeah. <laughs> shit play on, that shit's on TBS. That shit's on TBS, and you start looking, be like, all right, bet. You you you, you vacuuming, and this shit come on on TBS, and be like, all right, bet. I'm going to check this out. When people ask, yo, what can I catch Tag at? Uh, you can catch that on the popular streaming service, uh, Jet Blue. Jet okay? Blue. You might be catching on Delta if you're lucky. All right. <laughs> Sticking to Hollywood uh, headlines pertaining mm. to comic books and pop culture. This next one, Ed. I want you to take over. You brought this to the group. Uh, what you got for us? So this is just kind of an overall question. So because we haven't really talked about the uh, James Gunn takeover hmm. as the co CEO, but basically this latest news is he's pay basically any kind of rumor or any kind of casting news. He's just basically on Twitter debunking things left and right. So basically, it's a uh, Jacob L. Ro L. Ordy. 
from Euphoria. Mm-hmm. He was supposed to be Superman, but he came out and said, I'm writing a Superman script. We're not casting anybody till I'm done with it. And like I said, they, him and Peter Safran, they took over as co-CEOs October of last year. I don't think we really talked about it on the show. I think I, I, I actually want to say we did cover that whenever the news of uh, him, uh, James Gunn, Peter Safran um, becoming like heads of DC Studios. I think we, we briefly kind of mentioned that. So basically so far, they haven't really said too much. They said what they're not doing, which is see a rock. We ain't bringing you back. <laughs> <laughs> they said uh, Wonder Woman 3. Nah. Henry Cavill. Nah. We have this 10 year plan. We don't know. We haven't really talked about it, but it's going to involve video games, movies, and the TV. Um, but like I said, he's kind of, it's, it's, he's so interactive on Twitter and he's basically shutting down people left and right. I'm just curious. How do you think this is going so far as, as somebody like, you don't see Feige going back and forth yeah. with fans and stuff like this. Can I, can I, can I go ahead and start this off? I got time. Yeah. Oh, it's lit. Okay. First Uh-oh. off. Uh-oh. I'm going to need all these nerds to calm the fuck down. Like, seriously. <laughs> like, high key, y'all getting mad because your favorite not coming back. Dog, them people don't care about you, dog. Let's cup it, Let's yeah. get a bean. They're going to go get money elsewhere. Henry Cavill came back as like, Superman for like a cup of coffee. And then he was like, oh, oh shit, I'm not Superman no more? Oh, word, I'm going to go do this Warhammer shit. Real easy, right? I compared this. To and he's like, what James gonna do and bring back, you know? And of course, you hear the loud Snyderverse folks, right? But I compared this to those who maybe have watched one thing in sports or follow a sports team. When you get new people in power, oh yeah, they are going to want to put mm-hmm. their own shit in power. It's the cutting if board. if there is literally something that they want to use, like if there's a star player, like they're gonna keep obviously gonna keep one star player. But in this Coaches case, it's probably gonna. Exactly. At this yeah. point, it's like, hey, we're gonna keep the Batman. What what old boy got over there? Got over there doing? He's like, we're gonna keep that going. But the rest of this, that's gone, right? You're rebuilding it into your image, and for you to try to keep that and try to live on with somebody else's image, ain't gonna work. Like, why would you do that? That and like I said, you can even bring it down to like if you ever worked anywhere and you got a new boss coming in. Yeah, yeah. he's gonna make there's some stupid changes. There's gonna be some. You can. That's, I can understand people being mad too. Like, right? You have. Yeah. You have that. You threw your money and time and stuff like in that, and it's like, wow, why would you do this? And it's, but you know, it's it, it's gonna happen. That is literally the way of life. Like, if I start this all over and like if I'm taking over short box. Obviously, I'm not going to keep harder. Why would I do this? Whoa. Oh, Shaggy. That was such I... a funny. Whoa. <laughs> Shaggy, what, 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 what are you doing? Out of, all, out, of, out of all of all the, 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 <laughs> the fake scenarios and possibilities you could have showed, you chose you taking over short box. coming at you. I hey, brother. Wildest dream. Don't Just let me move face. back. Don't let me move back. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, to short, welcome to short box platinum edition. <laughs> Just rolling that. But, you get, right. but y'all get what I'm saying, though, right? Like, yeah. it's just. You want to take that over, and then obviously you're, he's gonna have to defend himself from like mm-hmm. angry fans, just like mm-hmm. people. Just like I said, it comes back to sports. Just like when people take over, like the Jags, for instance, when new coaches and stuff, like why we do this, why we do that. You see through the vision. Let stuff happen first. If they fail, then you can be like, oh look, see it never worked. But if they work, then you're gonna look stupid. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But do you think they d- go ahead? Yeah, do you think he should be engaging as much as he is he's engaging? I kind of find it refreshing that he yeah. is smacking these rumors down himself. You know, it's not like a publicist or, you know, yeah. uh, a, a a company Twitter account. It's like it's coming from the source. I like that he's controlling like the narrative, right? Like not letting rumors uh, run wildfire. Even though I am curious what is his uh, screen time? Cuz if he's online yeah. like on Twitter this much to knock down these rumors like and very quickly too, I feel like like these rumors don't he's got get some a lot of alerts going <laughs> all day. <laughs> yeah. bing, 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 his bing. ads are crazy right now, bro. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Shaggy, I, I like I I like what you're saying and and I agree that you know when you've got a new regime coming over to take over something as as monumental and as as big as you know DC Studios you know it's it's fair game there's a lot of things that are going to be on the cutting block and especially when you consider something like the DC universe which has become so polarizing right it mm-hmm. isn't like it's it's got it's it's either got its extreme diehard fans or you've got people that just don't care for a lot of those movies yep. like it it, it it to me, it warrants a um, 
like a, a massive kind of like under uh i'm sorry what is the phrase i'm thinking of like uh i guess refresh it it, it kind of yeah, warrants definitely. like this extreme refresh where it's like look let's take everything off the board and st- like what do you want to start new i know as a as a fan of of, of you know these comic book movies and someone who's Watch just about all of these movies. I'm ready for something like just brand new. Yeah, yo. And, and then, what do and you then, think too? Go ahead. He's uh, he's also saying that, and I don't know how he can really promise this, but we'll see how these turn out. But he's saying that they will movies will no longer have studio interference, which was a big problem with the uh, the last uh, Justice League movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and he says the only interference, he's like, basically the studio is Peter and I. We are the studio. So if there's any inter- interference, it's going to be us. But there's not going to be a bunch of suits kind of meddling with the story, looking at what Marvel's doing and trying to copy what they're doing in a quick way. What do you, do you think that's feasible? And do you think he has that kind of clout? So, yeah, he, he definitely has that clout. Uh, my man's doing his best. First off, going back to the Twitter thing, he's doing his best Kevin Durant impression. And just like coming out of nowhere yeah, and just blocking stuff. Yeah, burner account just blocking everything. Well, except he's tweeting it from his own stuff. But like him <laughs> saying that is something that we all want because you know there's no studio interference with Marvel. But they but the thing with Marvel is they had to earn that, right? Like Kevin Feige calls all of that and it goes through Feige. It don't go through Disney. Right. Yeah. Disney's like, oh, we don't like this. Feige's like, I don't care. He's like, he's gonna do it, right? He's gonna do what it is. And Kevin and then James Gunn is trying to do that same thing. And saying like, look, it's gonna come between me and and him, and we're gonna and as long as we're good. And then like, again, the people who are mad, I don't think they've read a comic book in their life, especially DC comics. With <laughs> as many a times we gone through refreshes <laughs> through every like five years, so many like, crises Lord, on wherever. bro, so many crises, so many <laughs> DC rebirth, the new fifty two. Like we've mm-hmm. gone through all of this, and then like when we do it in movie wise, it's an uproar. Granted, yeah, but you know, comic fans like us, we already used to it. We like, mm-hmm. all right, man, whatever. We gonna see what it, we gonna see what happens. But at the same time, we're more welcoming. And then other people are like, what are you doing? Like, it, like I wait, you know, it's just because they just want you to respect their time. Yeah. At the yeah. end of the that day. being said, though, is there like a casting thing? Because there's also he, um, they basically have canceled. Uh, Wonder Woman three with Patty Jenkins, so it looks like they're cutting ties Gal-Gadot. with her and Gal Gadot. But that's not that's not in concrete yet. That's not in concrete, nah. but they I don't think they're moving forward with Wonder Woman three for at least this initial set of news. We have the Blue Beetle movie coming up, but I'm not even sure when that was even made. Yeah, you know. It's like... <laughs> and and they're say, talking I, about it. Doesn't feel like it. I'm sorry. It, it doesn't feel like this is coming from like a need for. You know, like uh, control from like a dictatorship perspective. It doesn't sound like James Gunn and uh, is is getting high off the control. I think like this is kind of like a necessary evil. And and Ed, yeah. I, you know, I, w- I wanted to share this quote from that article uh, that Gunn had wrote on his Twitter, where he acknowledges like uh, he says we we know we are not going to make every single person happy every step of the way. End quote. Starting off, I I like the fact that he's addressing yeah. that. Like I know I'm going to be the it's bad impossible. guy yeah. in a lot of people's eyes. It's it's the reality of things. But the following tweet, I think, uh, gives you a better idea of, like, what his goal is in making such drastic changes. He says, quote, but we can promise everything we do is done in the service of the story. And he's got that um, capitalized. And in the service of the DC characters we know you cherish and we have cherished our whole lives. I feel like I, I just heard, uh, I feel like Cesar wrote that tweet from. You know how <laughs> Cesar said, in the service of the story? So to me, that, that tells me that that gun is, like, that kind of taking it back to like basics, like looking at the fa- fundamentals of what makes a good movie or a good story is like, you know, it fuck the, the A list celebrities attached to this, like to these projects. It's about the story, it's about the characters and making like a good product, telling a good story. And if that's the case, like I'm, I'm here for it. I just look, I, I had to be reminded Man of Steel has came out in 2013. You know, Henry Cavill has uh, played Superman intermittently for the last 10 years. Mm-hmm. Um, like as a fan what did you expect that he's gonna do another 10 years underneath like this new regime like they brought in james gunn and peter saffron what after um uh what was the movie uh was it right after black adam that they were announced as the um uh, as the heads of dc studio right i think it was around right 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 before right after it's like you know like look at the catalyst why were why did they make such a drastic uh uh, change and, and have them assigned to that it's because like they just could not I don't think they were able to land a a a, a uh, 
for, for like a term, for lack of better terms, like they weren't able to land a movie that, without a shadow of a doubt, was good. I think every single movie of theirs was just, like I said, polarizing. It was either only the diehard fans loved it, like the the Snyderverse uh, uh, fans out there, or it just bombed. You know, like look at the state of like DCU prior to uh, to Gun. You know, I, I'm yeah. I'm here for giving him a fair shot and doing it his way. I think maybe the first Wonder Woman. Yeah, yeah. But then I, after yeah. that, yeah, yeah, I agree. There's I definitely there's here. definitely gems, and there's yeah. definitely exceptions to what, what I just said. It's Shazam. not saying every single DC universe was, was terrible because there were some gems. But I think if you're looking holistically, like nah, their batting average is rather yeah. low. And if low. if I was James Gunn, I wouldn't want to play with old toys neither. It's like, look, <laughs> if you're going to bring me in and and I got to do this thing right, you got to give me the power to do it the way I want. Because at the end of the day, I th- and and all that, but Shaggy, to your point. It is mad early. The dude, like, literally hasn't announced <laughs> anything. All he's saying is, like, and I think that, it, I think he's so adamant about knocking down these rumors is because, you know, he's trying to, like, I think keep things realistic that we haven't even done casting because the script ain't even done. Yeah. Like, what are we fighting or, or talking about yet, right? Like, I kind of get, like, just leave me alone until I'm ready to show you guys what, I'm, <laughs> what I've done. Bro, he's like, yo, chill out, man like chill out but like you know it all comes with the commodity though because like of course one thing and i think one of the bigger funny things is is like but i bet you keep suicide squad though you're not gonna get rid of that i'm like well well no because why would i but at the same time it wouldn't shock me if he's like we're gonna Mm -hmm. try to do something else like different that's a gem like that was a gem and i mean look and if i mean yeah let's be real Sometimes you play favoritism with the things that you've done, right? Oh, yeah. And if it oh, yeah. and it, the receipts show that shit was was a fucking mm-hmm. banger, right? And another like, thing too is like it's interesting. It's he is kind of Matt Reeves has his own separate yeah. uh, oh, sandbox. Hey, so and I definitely was gonna say that because I'm like, long as he leave Matt Reeves alone, I'm yeah, good. I don't he said care that. what He's James, like, James Gunn do. Leave he him said alone. said his plans are not gonna interfere with the uh, the Batman universe that Matt Reeves is with the Penguin show. It's that, probably because the Batman was fucking good. And good. James Gunn is like, yeah, we'll keep the good shit, you know, but yeah. I'm not gonna keep <laughs> I'm not gonna keep the things that like have caused headaches uh, for for us. Yeah, yeah, I, I can. It was like get it. I think Bat I think the Batman was like in the top ten of the grossing movies mm-hmm. of 2022. And yeah. it's like, yeah, we're gonna keep the breadwinner. Like, what are you, yeah. what are you talking about? Like, and we're not gonna, yeah. we're not gonna mess with him. We're gonna let him do his thing. And it's like, like I said, it's one of those players that you're gonna like. He's, he's doing good. We're gonna keep that over there. Yeah. But then you talk about, then you also have the troublemaking players that you keep. And that's when I bring in, and again, I, I bring in sports analogies because it's funny, because it's hilarious, and also given what we went through last night, you have your Antonio Browns, and that would be the Flash movie. <laughs> Like, and old boy mm. being the flash and they're kind of like, well, you really should get rid of him. And they're kind of like, eh, wait a minute. We might not. And it's kind of like, wait, what are you doing? Like, are you keeping him? Now we need like, some spice him. in the dish. As right? Rebe- well, he this lost his damn mind. I mean, he's <laughs> bro, not just like, oh, I'm we're like, just going to hey, do it. <laughs> I mean, his, his situation is a lot different. But, Listen, they're keeping like, that. They're keeping that because they're like, look, our PR team's got to earn their budget. All right. We, bro, work like, you don't think they'll show it like that girl? Dog, don't let that movie, don't let that movie be, uh, like, get any close to, like, people be like, oh, we're going to cancel it, and it still makes us money, and then some, and you're going to be like, bro, don't let that movie yeah. be good, dog, because it might be a wrap. <laughs> like, it might be well, a wrap, man. The Flashpoint thing is going to set, it was what set up the new 52, so they could put it out, and it's like, all right, yeah. we're setting up the plate for oh, it's the James Gunn it's version. Yeah. I think, I think in closing, what Gunn has shared about at least the Superman movie, because it sounds like he's taking lead on writing that new Superman movie. He's, he's taking it. Henry Cavill just didn't fit in the, in the scope of things because it, <laughs> it didn't match the story he was going with. He's going for an origin younger, story, right? younger, yeah. uh, younger, younger actor. Yeah. Um, you know, we're talking, and, and I think also focusing on uh, Clark Kent as a reporter, right? You know, first making it a Metropolis meeting key characters, your lowest lanes and, and other um, and other of his uh, circles. So it, it's like, yeah, it's Henry Cavill just don't fit. Henry Cavill just does not fit into this. And no. if anything, I'm kind of excited about maybe like welcoming a new Superman and growing up with that, or like, I guess, you know, getting older with a younger Superman. Yeah. No sad fisherman? Nah, it, it's, it's already run its course. Right? <laughs> nah, One sad fisherman one Superman sad fisherman is Superman. enough for the world. <laughs> all right. I'm in, I got all these powers. <laughs> what a bummer. Whoa. I'm right. going to live forever. Hey, thanks for bringing that up. Um, I, it, it sounds like we are all pro <laughs> oh, James yeah. Gunn. I love James Gunn. I loved right? him since like yeah. his trauma days. Yeah. 
Dude, yes, yeah, trauma. Think... Dude, don't get me started. But yes, yeah. I'm I'm with I'm a hundred percent with James Gunn and like putting Watch a new Slither. Code of on everything. Yeah, I'm, yeah, he's great. All yeah, right, man. on the topic of of outrage. I'm gonna bring it back to to comic books on <laughs> this one because it wasn't um it, it wasn't just uh movies in, in Hollywood that made um headlines this month so far. A comic book also got some people in their feelings, all right? A recent backup story <laughs> in the Joker, the man who stopped laughing, mm. issue four. Uh the backup story was called Knocked Upside Down, has made headlines because if it's <laughs> uh, I mean it's a pretty zany ass plot, all right? Even yeah. by comic book standards, <laughs> it's pretty funny, it's pretty crazy. But it finds the Joker becoming pregnant, um, and that has resulted in a case of extreme <sighs> butt hurt amongst DC people. DC is just going down the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with the folks at Fox News, mm. all right? There, there was a whole segment they did covering <laughs> this, uh, this comic book. I think you can find that on YouTube, yeah. right, Dad? All right, yeah, you can find it on YouTube. Uh, some backstory, if you haven't uh, seen the headline, if you haven't heard the news or know anything about Joker's uh, pregnancy... The comic book in question, like I said, is The Man Who Stopped Laughing, Issue 4, is being published by DC Comics. No surprise there. It is written by Matthew Rosenberg with art by Francesco Francavella. Mm. Uh, the series is essentially about uh, Joker um, uh, having to uh, chase down an imposter who has uh, declared war on the United States using kind of his, his gimmick um, in different areas as well. So it completely focuses on Joker. It's a very serious, very kind of dark tone uh, comic book, and I guess in every issue they do a more lighthearted. Yeah, the uh, thing with the, uh, the 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 back issues is basically they are doing a Silver Age Joker stories. Got it. It's the whole theme. That's why the premises are so goofy. We're talking about Rainbow Batman era, mm -hmm. Rainbow suits, Adam West era Batman. Yeah, like kind of the 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 kind of the more kind of goofy stuff in the Silver Age. So basically, these backup stories, like the first backup story, is him wanting to date uh, Power Girl, hmm. and it, power will beating the shit out of him. and then the next one is him wanting to date uh big barda um bad he's got a type so far oh, but he definitely got a type bro beat the shit out beat yeah. the shit out of him he gets cut in half they put gorilla legs up. it's crazy and so this one he wants to go out with so these premises are very goofy and lighthearted. so he wants to go out with zatanna zatanna bungles a spell Basically, his, her spell initially was you can never get anyone, you can never have a kid, you're, you can never procreate. But basically, she fumbles the spell and he becomes pregnant and he has like a little weird clay face baby. It's so bizarre. <laughs> it's so weird. Yeah, and it pretty much describes it really well. I mean, it, it's all initially and, because Joker confesses. And they're, and they're basically to... calling this, this is like a pro trans, which is not even like brought up. It was like a trans, they made Joker like a trans woke pregnant i i don't even the, the the dots they're connecting here it's so strange well some of the some of the stuff that <laughs> they said that I'll, I'll share is one they called uh there's a quote here from one of the contributors joke uh concha 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 uh he said something along the lines that it's no longer the joker now the he's, woker? he's the <laughs> woker that's funny that, that's, that's, a, that's, that's a pretty, pretty good line <laughs> but, but for the most part uh fox and friends uh, a lot of those hosts were were disgusted during the segment they oh. were they were shocked Oops. they called it woke crap. visibly shaken yeah they called it woke crap they were they were confused they were confused why um why like uh the publishers why the writers why the why the creative team aren't able to like read the comic book that's market. why no one's buying comics anymore because yeah, of the woke garbage and they even one of the guys even says it's a spell cast on him so he even says in this little snippet like they don't mention like the woke or trans or whatever angle they're coming at but he says it's a spell put on him but that doesn't matter yes it fucking matters <laughs> to, to make your point Bro. of course it matters what do you mean it doesn't matter yeah. And uh, when I read the premise of the story, which Ed you, you summarized, like it, it sounds exactly like how a a parody, a, yeah. a Silver Age parody like story, that mites coming in here would doing, go. Yeah, like the Tana's powers kind of do weird shit like this, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's Joker giving basically, like you said, like a birth to himself. Like he spits out like yeah, a clay face a baby who becomes uh, who transforms into like a mini Joker baby. Like that 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 makes sense for a Joker story. There's only one person that the Joker loves more than himself. No, I'm sorry. There's no one else the Joker loves more than himself. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, so I was a little... I mean, obviously, these guys, uh, th these hosts did not read the comic book. I think no. a lot of people who are um, just reading the headlines yeah. um, are, you know... They uh, don't are, know what the reference is. They don't know the exactly. Silver Age callback. 
Nope. They yeah, obviously don't read comics. And if you're going to push a political agenda, this is a weird road to go. There because you can always say it's Batman has always magic. been Bat yeah, it's magic. And Batman has always kind of had, especially like, kind of like in the, the probably the mid eighties to mid nineties, kind of an anti god subtext. Where it's almost yeah, like wanna, a you know, you it's really like get political. Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I was like, you want to look for a little while, I bet you look at that uh my body, my choice shit at that point out, huh? Look at you in comic books. But like it's <laughs> it was so it was so fucking it was like and I'm a big Batman fan too, so I saw it and I'm just like what the fuck am I looking at? But of course with Fox <laughs> News covering, I'm like, Okay, it doesn't matter anymore. Fun's over, folks. Like it's yeah. They're going to blow it out of proportion for no reason, and, and none of you, them have picked up a book. There's so many other angles you can go to if you want – if this is the point you're trying to make, like mm -hmm. this new politically correct woke culture thing. But this is like you're really grabbing at a very ridiculous premise that didn't mention any of those buzzwords that you're so against. Well said, yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's so strange. You can go after Batman for being an anti-gun liberal mm -hmm. something, especially like a lot of liberal. the stuff in the – now, depending on the writer, how Batman always views guns, you know, and so you can say this is like some, you know, political angle there. But this is this is really ridiculous. It's a reach. And if I may ask, it. it's a super reach. And if I may ask, when the fuck did the Joker deserve our empathy or understanding? Yeah. Dog, like, that's a worst character Out of all the characters, <laughs> it's like, yeah. who gives a fuck if the this mass murderer has to carry a fucking clay oh baby. God. They're going to have Joker coming out with like a Fox News button. <laughs> They're going to do some kind of. <laughs> Not, hold on, real quick. I, I ain't going to hold y'all. I saw it again and I literally was like, he's probably pregnant with Batman's baby, bro. And it's probably going to be Batmite. When I heard it was magic involved, I was like, <laughs> it's going to be Batmite, bro. And I'm going to just sit there and That's chuckle. funny. This, this is how the new Batmite is born. I'm like, no. Yeah. No, get the fuck out of here. So I guess, and in, in, into. Ed's point, these backup stories in this series are supposed Not consequential. to be this zany, this uh, to um to kind of juxtapose against how dark and serious the the tone of the yeah. main book is. If anything, I'm I'm curious how if this book is going to be one of those kind of like expensive books. I'm, I wonder what the resale oh, yeah. on this is, right? Just because of the controversy. This is gonna sell copies, that's for sure. Do you think do you oh, think yeah. it'll sell more copies than, uh, than the uh bat dick scandal? <laughs> I definitely was about to say it barter hive mind, hive mind, bro. Remember that? I know those black label ones are expensive. Yeah. This is not even a black <laughs> label book like eight, either. Eight dollar nah. book. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh listeners what I what I what I will um uh share with you if you want to get a um if you want to get an even bigger chuckle Oh, out of pregnancies and comic books. Go to, uh, pull up your Google tab right now. Go, pull up a tab, go to Google, and look up <laughs> Quasar number 29, oh. which is one of the funniest. Marvel, the house of ideas. And this book came Boy. out it uh, first. in 1991. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a cover featuring Quasar holding a ginormous... Uh, uh, pregnancy. Bullet. Oh, it's like the Rolling Stones cover. The it? it's supposed to be an homage to the Vanity Fair issue. Vanity Fair, one. that's it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, another thing too, doing. if you're worried about dudes being pregnant, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito <laughs> were in a movie called Junior. <laughs> oh shit! That's Arnold right. Schwarzenegger, one of the biggest stars ever, like an icon for an male icon masculinity. For the that... masculinity, he's commando. He's you know. Yeah. And he was in a, this is during his, when he was trying to be funny phase, but still, it's like, you're really, I don't remember hearing the backlash then. No. You know, it's, hey, it's, it's my wild. broke. A four page, <laughs> a four page backup story in a Joker comic. Oh man. Yeah. It get causes the, this much. Get to the emergency room now. I mean, I can, I can do all those jokes Yeah, if you if you're, if you're wanting to do these angles, you, you, there's. I don't know. This would be the last thing I would pick. There's so many other ways you can twist yeah. things to your agenda. You know, this is like, man, you're really reaching. Yeah. So I wanted to share that one just because of how <laughs> kind of ludicrous and kind of funny it is to uh, see a bunch of uh, adults, yeah. you know, get butt hurt over the a lady comic was book like, they've never read. Every turn we have to do this. <laughs> it's like comics are supposed to be like an escape. It's like comics have always been had had issues had social issues into it mm, bro the, if you don't notice it that means they did a really good job but come on you can't say that it's pure escapism you know there's always a message underlying in every Damn. media you go to they so it's, it's escapism. Uh, 
They say it's escapism and never fucking read an image comic in their life. <laughs> like, at all. <laughs> okay, maybe the image books. Maybe the early image Boy. books are pure escapism. But, um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, oh, it was so funny. He's like, there's every turn. He was like so mad. It was so funny. It's, yeah. yeah. Good stuff. All right. Well, that was the last headline that we'll be talking about today. Thoughts and prayers for our guy, Jeremy Renner. Mm hmm. I want you to tell us if there was a significant piece of comic news or headline we missed. We'd love to hear what you think uh, has been the best or, or craziest headline in comics so far. Can you top any of the, uh, the headlines and news that we shared today? If so, reach out to us on email or IG. Our next topic is one I've been waiting all year to do. All right, this is our first, this is our return to, to form this episode, right? A, a lot of, um, this is us returning to our classic segments oh. and topics, and it's time to talk about the best new and upcoming comic books hitting a shop near you. It's time to grab a fistful of comics. You can either have a mouthful of tea or a fistful of comics. <laughs> fistful of Comics is a segment dedicated to all you comic curious newbies and loyal Wednesday warriors who are looking for good starting points and new titles to explore in the wide world of comics. And who better to help us navigate the hundreds, if not thousands maybe, of comic books that come out every month than Ben Kingsbury, the owner of Gotham City Limit, Jacksonville's premier comic shop, the owner of Jacksonville's comic shop. Ben is going to do what he does best, and he's going to take us to the limit for the next 10 or 15 minutes, all right? Oh. I'm very disappointed it took me that long to use that sound bump for him. All right, Ben has provided me with a list of three new comics he thinks are worthy of the short box stamp of approval. Let's get some music going and see what's on the agenda today. Let's see what's made his list. All right, the first pick on this list is coming out through Dark Horse Comics. And it looks like it, it personally speaks to anyone that loves a good UFO sighting or alien story. Here's Ben to tell you more. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, Short Box listeners. I'm Ben K, representing Gotham City Limit, Jacksonville, Florida. And these are my three comic book picks you should add to your pull list before the final order cutoff. Let's start with Blue Book number one. Now, I feel like I'm living in the Matrix. It's kind of a dream come true. I wish I could go back to my 12-year-old self and tell him, wait till you're 43. They're going to make a nonfiction comic book about experiences of true stories of UFO abductions. Now, what's weirder, hmm. that there's a nonfiction experience of UFO abductions or that nobody in society ever freaking talks about it? <laughs> well, I can tell you, short box listeners, James Kinnian is going to bring the pain. Remember, the truth is out there. All right, I'm just going to say this. If James wow. Tinian is, is writing an alien... Oh, I guess it sounds like he's not doing a, a lot of writing because it's nonfiction, probably recounts and stories. But if James Tinian is involved with an alien book, I am for it, especially after reading uh, his series, The Nice House on the Lake. All right, I'm excited for that. All right, next up is one from Marvel Comics. For all the Spider-Man fans who love the villain slightly more than the webhead himself... Specifically, the, that one villain that's cloaked in red and black. See if you can guess what I'm talking about before Ben beats you to the punch. Next up, by Marvel Comics, Carnage number 10. Yeah, you heard that right. Usually, if it's an FOC pick for me, I try to get you started at the beginning of a series. But this current volume of Carnage has been chock full of key and first appearances. And Carnage number 10 promises to be no different. First off... Kendrick Lim brings the awesomeness with the cover art carnage horns and the teasing of a new weapon that would even make the slain null crumble. This comic has a high chance of being a key. Grab one, two, or ten before FOC. Trust me. You're the man. Go and grab yourself a go and grab yourself a first edition. And get rich ten years from now, right? When that book is worth like six bucks. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably going to be a key to someone all right and last but not least ben is keeping it marvel heavy hitters the last pick on ben's list comes in the form of something new and exciting oh. see what i did there yeah. see what i did there take it home ben and finally 
Another one by Marvel Comics. But the beginning of a three-part series, Immoral X-Men hmm. number one. Kieran Gillian is back. Have you been keeping up with the epic X-Men run that Jonathan Hickman started a couple years ago? Well, finally, Immoral X-Men number one promises the truth about the Quiet Council. Plus, Emma Frost takes a few minutes to crush out Mr. Sinister. A Sins of Sinister tie-in comic? Yes, please. Oh, shit. I was supposed to let that shit right and to the end. And finally, hold on, hold on, hold on. another one by Marvel Comics, <laughs> but the beginning of a three-part series, Immoral X-Men number one. Kieran Gillian is back. Have you been keeping up with the epic X-Men run that Jonathan Hickman started a couple years ago? Well, finally, Immoral X-Men number one promises the truth about the Quiet Council. Plus, Emma Frost takes a few minutes to crush out Mr. Sinister. A Sins of Sinister tie-in comic? Yes, please. So that's it. Another FOC is come and gone. I'm Ben K, still representing Gotham City Limit. Remember, with great power comes great responsibility and always take it to the limit. Yeah, damn right. You heard that, man. Go ahead and take it to the limit. <laughs> All right, gents, uh, of the three recommendations that Ben has graciously shared with us today, which one are you most interested in? Which one would you put on your poll list? Uh, Ed, how about you take it from us? Oh, man. Um, it's kind of a toss-up between Immoral X-Men and the uh, Blue Book. I do like Emma Frost. I haven't been keeping up with X-Men, though, so I'm going to go with Blue Book number one. All right, Blue Book number one. Vote for Blue Book number one. Shaggy, what about you? Man, looking at all those covers, I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hold you. Carnage is probably my favorite Spider-Man created character. Yeah, because uh, you're a fucking psychopath. Duh. You love violence. And uh, <laughs> come on, bro, I like horror movies and stuff, man. I'm a the savant. That dude speaks to me. But like, what also speaks to me, I don't know what's going on in that X-Men book, but the front cover of that book is like hitting some, hitting some points, and I'm just like, nah. I'm like, all right, that's <laughs> <Dominatrix. that one." laughs> and I'm like, hey, yo, I'm like, hold on, hey, what's this? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I am a sucker for James uh, Tinian, and uh, he has done no wrong for me. And it was crazy because, like, when he was writing Batman, I was like, yeah, I'm done. I'm not going to read no more Batman. And then I got into a lazy, like, okay, no, he's actually really a really good writer. So I think I'm going to put my favoritism and uh, kinks aside and go with Blue Book. That was so big of you, Shaggy. And I know how hard it was to put the kings aside. I had to. How hard it was. Get it? Ha, double Tantra? Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm corny. I'm sorry. All right. I I think this will be a clean sweep for uh, Blue Book because oh. I'm also going to co-sign that one based on the strength that James Tinian has. Uh, he, he killed it on Nice House on the Lake. If you haven't read that yet, there is a very disturbing alien um, at the center of that story. And for Blue Book, I see Michael uh, Avon Oming. Is that how you say his name? Yep. Uh, he's doing the interior artwork. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I feel like you don't get enough of uh, Oming on interiors. So I'm going to go with Blue Book wow. as well. So it sounds like a clean sweep. Over two Marvel books. Way to go, Potter. I know. I'm growing up. You know, I'm trying to be better <laughs> in 2023. You know, I, much like Shaggy, I'm trying to kick my kinks to the side. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it sounds like a unanimous, a unanimous co-sign for Blue Book number one. And that's the list, listeners. If any of those pique your interest, hit up your local comic shops and get your pre-orders in now. A big shout-out to Ben for always providing some top-notch recommendations. And remember, even if you don't live in Jacksonville yourself, you can still take it to the limit by shopping at the Gotham City online store for comics and exclusive variants. There is a link in the show notes if you're interested in checking any of those out. Now, while we were out, while we were enjoying a, a short little break, um, we got one email sent in, all right? And it's from our, maybe our most loyalist. Uh, our, is, that, is that a word? Our most loyalist? Loyal. Our most loyal. loyal. There you go. Yeah, you drop the ES. If you live in Russia. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> if I live Duh. in Russia. Uh, our most loyal short box uh, listener, Mr. T-Mix himself, oh. sent in a little something for us to, uh, you know, as, as like a, hey, when you guys get back, here's something to read. So this is what I'm going to read today. Uh, and it's aptly titled. It's appropriately titled Duval. And he's got all three U's in it, too. All right. So that is the title of the email, which speaks to my heart right now. T-Mix, you know what's going on. 
His email starts, Yo, what up, short box? Week 18 just finished. The Jags beat up on the Titans, and we are headed to the playoffs. Fuck yes. It was always the Jags. Okay, that's out the way. I love the holiday episode. It was great to hear the family together one last time for who knows how long. Uh, I'm going to try to say this. It's in Spanish. Te extrana puto Cesar. He writes in parentheses. I'm sure. Hopefully that's a good curse word, all right? Uh, I should have Google uh, translated that. Uh, He continues, good to hear you on the mic. Small world, after last week's pod, I saw this on my local comic shop. Uh, And he sends in an image of the Oblivion Bar podcast. It's a giant flyer for the Oblivion Bar podcast on a window. Whoa. Uh, And the email continues. So this... So does this mean I'm listening to the wrong pod? Question mark, question mark, question mark, exclamation point. Either that or I need to drop some short box posters up there so that Chris, who runs Oblivion Bar Pod, knows that the short box runs St. Louis. Looking forward to what you guys are doing this year. One champion, Joe Fixit number one. Ed was absolutely on point. Bader, he spells it B-A-D-A-R, which uh, would be Badar. Badar. (laughs) You will love it from the jump. Pure (laughs) entertainment. Hasa La Proxima, Cabrones, Putos, Mayhaz, and Ashley. Cesar was right. T-Mix. Cheers. Hell yeah. All right. First order of business. Look, I almost feel like uh, I almost feel like the Godfather having talked to his lieutenants. Oh. Oblivion Bar Podcast. You leave them alone. They could. Wait, which one of those guys are oh, uh, Patreon? Uh, <laughs> Chris on the right. Okay, put the, the poster over that dude. <laughs> 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 It makes you say, you go ahead and just cover up the yeah. left half side, right? Uh, cover up Aaron. Chris is good in the book. He's a Patreon yeah. subscriber. That guy's cool. Uh, you know, show him love. <laughs> now, nah, the Oblivion Bar, look, the Oblivion Bar pod are, are good folks. And, and you know, please don't please don't break this window to, to tear down their posters. They're good people. But if you want some short box posters to hang up in St. Louis, I'm not mm. opposed to that. I got some flyers I can send you to mix. Um, just let me know. All right. And then second order of business. His champion, which was Joe Fixit, number one. It's a, it's a brand new uh, series from Marvel Comics about Hulk's alternate, uh, more gangsta uh, mm-hmm. uh, per, uh, persona. Uh, actually came out last Wednesday at the time of the recording. So yeah. I, I think January Very 8th. New. Yep. Yeah. Which was also uh, one of Ben's uh, uh, FOC picks mm-hmm. from a previous episode. I think he, he talked about that months ago. And I've heard really good things about it. Ed, did you actually? You I picked, picked it up. I haven't read it. Okay. Yet. Got it. I, I've also picked it up. Haven't read it yet. Uh, so maybe he meant um, maybe he meant Ben was uh, absolutely on point oh, about it. Did I'll you take it? Did you Why champion you taking it? away my confidence? My bad, my bad. I, I want to make sure it goes to the right place. <laughs> but- if you want to see Hulk in a pinstripe suit, mm-hmm. that's the guy. That's the guy you want to see. Yeah, Mister Fix It. Fair enough. It's awesome. And T Max, I don't know what you're talking about. Cesar is right. Cesar is hardly ever right. So <laughs> it, it must be like a Spanish thing. All right. Maybe, you know, maybe you guys speak a different, I mean, no, you guys do speak a different language, but it must be something between y'all. All right. I, I see the favoritism and, and it's breaking my heart a little <laughs> bit. All right. That is the one email that we got. Big shout outs to T Mix. Uh, if you want to chime in, listeners, if you got a champion, if you want to talk to us, praise us. We, we ain't taking no negativity this mm-hmm. year. Right. If you got any shit talking, uh, save that for Shaggy Black, all right? Address mm-hmm. that directly to Shaggy Black, and, and you can get it handled. <laughs> at Shaggy Black. Yeah. Nah, nah, nah. Send that, send that to Cinema Villains Podcast at gmail.com. I will read that on air, and I will put you on blast because I got time, baby. I got time. Shaggy Black is the James Gunn of podcasters, right? He's got time to talk shit, all right? Boy. Look. But yeah, chime in, listeners. We love getting emails from you guys. We love, we love bullshitting and, and talking to you guys. Uh, so send us an email at theshortboxjacks at gmail.com. As always, I made it easy on you. There is a link in the show notes. Or you can send us a message on IG. Just let me know that you want me to read it on the show, and I'll do that. You got your marching orders. So while you do that, I think it's a perfect time to get into the last topic of today's show. Before we say goodbye, we're going to help you decide what you should check out the next time you find yourself with some free time or the next time that you're looking for something new to watch or read. It's time for champion season. It's time, it's time for, for champion, champion season. season. Champion season. Champion season is the part of the show where we highlight worthwhile entertainment options like movies, TV series, books, video games, and anything else that we would personally recommend to our friends looking for something new to dive into. Shaggy, you are our guest of honor. 
Um, I want to make sure that uh, I want to make sure that folks. Are you pouring Jameson Black? <laughs> Shaggy, for the love of God, that's enough. You ain't got no mixer, folks. You got to be watching the video version. All right, Shaggy's in, in is in full form today. Shaggy, how about you go ahead and lead us off before you stumble and can't speak anymore? Because I can, I can smell I can, I can smell the alcohol right from here. First off, cheers to the short box off rip. Mm -hmm. We'll take it. Ooh, we'll take it. Gotta love the gotta love Black Barrel because this is normal Jameson. I'd be on the floor. Um, <laughs> so the it, today. I am going. So normally, I, I definitely would have sung for it. First off, it's feel great to be back for champion season. I hadn't done this since like two years ago, so this is lit. Uh, do you like the? Uh, do, do you like the new? Um, I, I don't think this is your. I think this is your first time maybe hearing the new sound bump and it being more wrestling related. Do you like that? So. I still like I, I the old one has a place in my heart, bro. Because when we used to sing that beast off key, like it was always <laughs> fun. But like wait, wait. you know, uh, I with the old in with the new dog. I don't indulge hate me it. real quick. How did the old one go? Because I'm did honestly. Did you realize going... <laughs> that you are a champion? <laughs> like just off key, just wild off key, bro. Real ones know. Real wow. ones know, bro. I almost forgot. Real know. Yeah, I, I won't lie. I I genuinely kind of forgot. I don't remember the your part at the end, but maybe you know my memory. It was, was it was like yeah, but then it was reverb. Got it. Got it. I got, you. Like, I got you. Yeah. I got you. But um, normally I would have came here and I would have uh, I was gonna say yo, I'm gonna just talk about anime based Ooh. on our conversations that we had but i'm gonna take it a different way Ooh. and i'm going to champion a writer and producer uh akila cooper for those who don't know akila cooper you may not know her personally but you may know her work uh she was she's a screen she's like obviously she's a writer now but she's written two movies that uh, one is taking the one by storm and the other one is doing the exact same thing. She is now, she is the writer of 2002, uh, 2022's Megan and 2021's Malignant. Two oh, movies. Malignant. Yeah, she, two horror movies that she has uh, definitely taken literally the world by storm. And I'm not going to lie to you, like, Malignant was probably one of the stupidest fucking movies I have ever seen in my entire life. If I can get I that it. movie removed from my brain so I can experience it again, I would. 11 <laughs> out of 10, my favorite movie of 2021. No bullshit. It was my Loved top five. It. It, dude, C yes. and I agreed on that. We champ co champion that when it yes, came out. Yes, that was great. And the then, audacity of bro, using that money to make that movie, James Wan. Bro, the audacity <laughs> of you. James Wan was on a Coke bender of epic he, proportions, but it's, it was to, it's to Mr. Akila Cooper who wrote that because apparently like looking in this she knows what it is she knows what it takes to write a villain mm. uh, mm -hmm. because she did that same thing of back by doing it with megan and that little that little ai robot was probably the sassiest <laughs> thing i have ever seen on screen in a long ass time and oh god I really... is, this a, is this another one of your kinks is this another one no, 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 no no absolutely <laughs> not absolutely not but it was def definitely just just a real, it was a fun time, and we may have a new horror villain coming out, just like we had with Gabriel with Malignant. Now we have Megan, the AI uh, bot, but she's also written a lot of other stuff, too. Like, when it comes to movies, she's written Hellfest, uh, obviously Malig Malignant and Megan, and now she's doing The Nun, too. And then she's also written, like, uh, she was also a writer on, like, Tron Uprising, uh, the TV show <laughs> Grimm, uh, The 100, done an episode of American Horror Story and Luke Cage, uh, Avengers Assemble, um, mm. and she's done Jupiter's Legacy and uh, Star Trek Strange okay. New Worlds. She's got, like, yeah. a background in television, but, like, those movies, she knows how to write a villain, and I'm 100% for it, so I champion her and her work. Please, you can go stream Malignant on HBO Max and go spend money on Megan because I'm going to tell you, when we are going to be doing those movies – we're gonna be reviewing them on uh, Cinema Villains, and I promise you, we're gonna look forward to that. Good stuff. All right, thank you, Shaggy. You got any, you got anything else for our pass to Ed? Um. Well, mm -hmm. okay. Fuck it. I'm gonna just go ahead and throw that anime in there. Chainsaw Man, <laughs> and uh, oh. and and season season five or season six of uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, like uh, Stone Ocean. That those those two. Also, Spy Family, but those two have been I've been watching. Uh, Bro, I got into... and, uh... Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I was gonna say uh, I, I got in a spy family uh, last year. Specifically, the manga. I haven't started the uh, the anime. Bro, I, mm. I love that family. Love it, dude. It's so it's so great. Like it's it it's so violently wholesome. 
That's <laughs> yeah, that is a what well, that what that what that, what that anime is. Like it's funny because I've been trying to read the manga of that and I hadn't got into it. Uh, I got into Chainsaw Man with like the first manga book and then I just went back and watched the anime and I was like, okay, no, this is this is amazing. This is some art. And then um, Spy Family, I just got into the anime and I, it was a tradition. I would get like after my Twitch streams, I would literally go get like Taco Bell, sit back down and watch uh, <laughs> watch Spy Family and just and just like enjoy the, my little twenty minutes of uh, uh, culture uh, cultural life or uh, slice of life. Violent mm-hmm. slice of life anime. So yeah, yeah, good stuff. That's it, bro. All right, Ed, passing to you. What you got to champion? All right, let me do a couple animes. I'll follow <laughs> up with that. I'm going to oh, yeah. champion. Just, I believe it was. It's a very recent, but uh, Blade of the Immortal. It's on Amazon Prime. Mm. Yeah. If you are a fan, it's. I don't. It's a very slow. Like if you read the comic book, you know, there's like a lot of slow story parts, a lot of sword school talk, but the violence is insane in that's in that comic so they have an animated series and it is i think it's almost 30 episodes that's a pretty good series they they do the whole the whole run of the comic um hey, yo, i Ed, like it real quick yo, real quick Ed, didn't they make it a movie as well yes okay we so that, the, uh, the movie i saw the movie I've on seen hulu. sunray i've seen it on mm-hmm. sunray yeah, i've seen it on, i've seen it on hulu that movie was fucking absurd <laughs> the violence very, that yes. was yeah. absurd yeah yes so it's basically, you know, if you know the story, it's a uh, Manji who's kind of gained the curse of immortality through these blood worms that are kind of like nanotechnology that heal him up. So basically he can survive any wounds as long as his body parts are close together. He can kind of basically reassemble himself. So in the comic, it's funny because he goes from a elite fighter to a very... um very careless fighter because he has this healing factor so he gets very sloppy but uh it's really cool it's it's not doesn't have the biggest budget but they do some really cool effects to kind of make up for it uh, i think it's uh, visually very good but it's a lot of like the comic a lot of manji sleeping a lot of rin crying but then the violence is pretty insane and they keep that in the uh, in the series but that's on amazon prime another one that i think came out two years ago is uh dororo which is in Asamu Tezuka um, series about a the character is basically kind of that old Japanese trope of the annoying little kid sidekick but the uh, Hiyaka Maru is is a basically his father made a deal with 12 demons to take basically every piece of his first his son so basically the baby ended up like a little gross ugh, it's really gross like holes for eyes, like a hole for a nose, like no arms or legs, just like this little lump of grossness. So they send him, but basically he made a deal with these demons to have basically be prosperous and kind of rule the land. So he gets floated down the river, I think Abraham style, he just gets floated down the river to die. And he gets picked up by this uh, this uh, blacksmith slash person who makes some... Um, uh, artificial limbs, um, prosthetics. So, uh, that main character is basically, but that character basically has this vision to where he can see sense demons and every demon he kills, he basically regains a body part Hmm. to the 12 demons that were, uh, that were sacrificed. This is a really creepy story. The kid is the cute, annoying kid is kind of like the exposition because you have a character that's basically has like a porcelain mask, really creepy looking, uh, it's not done in the Tezuka style, cartoony style, but basically pulls his arm off. So there are blades, you know. It's it's pretty pretty wild, wild story. Um, but it's cool that they made an adaptation of it. Um, so I think that's also on Amazon Prime as well. So I was just kind of stumbled upon those the last couple of weeks. So I was like, oh wow, this is cool. Um, and the last one is Mark Millar <clears throat> has relaunched Nemesis with Jorge Jimenez. Um, I got to see that if you don't mind. Yes. I got to hold that. I'll hold it at the camera too. It was originally a four part mini series when Millar was still with Marvel doing the Icon series. And it's basically a reverse Batman. So <laughs> if Batman trained under just cartels and criminals and used all his money just to cause chaos rather than help people, that's basically the concept of Nemesis. It's just super violent. If you like Millar's ultra violent work, this is right up there. Um, it's crazy because it's originally Steve McNiven. They're basically mm-hmm. the co-creators of this. Um, and I was reading an article about 
you know, people wanting this character back. And Millar said that he made more money on that four issue series than he did on Civil War. Damn. So <laughs> Civil War is a pretty well, big deal. Well, we all know Marvel don't pay. Yeah. <laughs> Marvel don't pay is great. So that's kind of, I think, oh, Millar's kind of planning his, you know, his eventual Netflix hmm. strategy. But um, really violent Jimenez is. He's hmm. Millar. Even if you don't care for his writing, he doesn't. He picks the best of the best when it comes to the artist. He Dude. just he picks the cream of the crop. He'll like, oh, I'll just take you the best. Yeah, and I've listened to an interview, and we've talked about it a little bit before. He'll he'll talk to an illustrator. It's like he'll give them co-creator. This I'm not sure how it's going to work out, but um, usually he'll give co-creator credits to the artist, and he's like, do you want to make a million dollars to do like a five issue series? Come on board. <laughs> <laughs> he's yeah. that guy is Mark Millar addresses, no joke Mark Millar addresses uh, the rest of the comic community specifically artists like Suge Knight did at the 95 uh, Source Awards <laughs> are you tired of your publisher <laughs> yeah dancing in your music videos come to Millar world <laughs> that's how he does it um, and Ed if you don't mind I, I think we can in in interject one of these stories we, we left on the uh, on the table which is uh, Millar World mm -hmm. uh, Mark Millar recently announced uh, and you, you know all credit to you for sharing this but Mark Millar announcing that he is doing a I think crossover it just isn't the right word it's for it this shit is epic ambitious it's he wants to do a basically a it's called big time it's going to be a crossover with 24 of his properties. This guy is a writing machine. Can we just, uh, so, real, real quick, can we just start with that? <laughs> 24. 24 this, properties he could just yeah. pull from. There's stuff that he can't use because it's like space stuff in the future, but mm -hmm. I don't know. He might not, but another another thing, he got uh, Pepe Larraz from House of X. Come on, He man. just like, this guy is like, no joke. He's taking your top players <laughs> and giving them more money and probably a more fun gig with mark millar mark millar is is like th probably the best and i guess uh, you know shaggy's been bringing up a lot of a sports reference so this is on my mind but this dude is a premier talent scout when oh, yeah. it comes to picking his creative team. he was ahead of the curve i mean his stuff isn't as big as the mcu stuff but man he was really ahead of the curve as far as pitching because he was on a roll of doing basically five issues of different ideas mm -hmm. and basically making pitches with the best artists in the industry to eventually, like I said, they, there's been like varying degrees of success in what you call a success. They actually did a season of Jupiter's legacy, but you know, of course that got canceled, mm -hmm. but you know, like I said, he's got that Netflix backing now, you know? So it's, he kind of saw where the game was going and he kind of jumped oh, yeah, ahead. Yeah. So it's, he's like I said, it was really cool stuff. Like I said, the, the titles he did mention were Kingsman, and like the Kickass universe, are kind of in the same. He's saying they're kind of in that same, same world. So and they're kind of really... the same flavor, right? Like you know, espionage, yeah, hyper violent, yeah. no super powered yeah. people yeah, yet. Yep, yep. I'm sure Nemesis yeah, not, will be in it. It's not crazy and shit. Like it's it's believable. It's like that realism yeah. type shit. Like it's. I don't know. He could throw us that. for a curve and bring some like super powered people. Like Huck would be a cool character to oh, bring. Oh man, in. I, I love his Huck series, um, uh, which was drawn yeah. by Raphael Albuquerque. Yeah, so great artist. There's some pages, like black and white pages, you can see online. They look pretty cool, freaking amazing. So it's going to be cool. I mean, it, it, it's when you think about what he's done with his comic book properties and, you know, like you mentioned, a few of the movies. I mean, even like animated, because I think Super Crooks yeah, got its own animated yep. series. Yeah, it did. It, it's almost like I feel like we should have maybe gotten a, a massive crossover, a comic book crossover like this much sooner. But I, I'm not mad at, you know, him doing it now with 24 franchises, you know, to his name, you know, his no. own properties. Um, I kind of I, I feel like we should probably do a Mark Millar episode at some point, like an artist spotlight, because it's got me mm -hmm. thinking like um, how we were talking about Rick Remender and him having like a really good eye for artists. Oh, yeah. Mark Millar might have him beat. Because Mark Millar is he wanted to be an artist initially, and it's kind of he transitioned <laughs> to a writer, but yeah. he started with 20 AD. In the 80s, so he was with that group of those British writers. Yeah, we might have to and do like, one. Yeah, because I think he'd be a good writer, another like writer spotlight for sure. Fair enough. Good champion, Ed. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, my first champion. I, I feel like it's going to come across like I'm I'm sucking up to you too, and, and I'm trying to get brownie points. <laughs> but this is a genuine thing I have fallen in love with, and that is WWE story time. Uh, it is no Ooh. secret. 
your boy is on TikTok. Uh, you know, a, a millennial trying to hang with these uh, Gen Zers and these young kids. My <laughs> algorithms on on TikTok have. I, I mean, they know me. They know me well. It, it is hip hop. It is comic books. And then I have fallen somehow. Wrestling talk has kind of <laughs> invaded it too. So I get a lot of videos of like uh, WWE. You know what it is? Because I started liking all of those Mike Judge tales from the tour bus videos oh, and great. clips that people post. So I think it's like, okay, he likes animated stuff. Let's show him WWE yeah. story time. And I have fallen down a rabbit hole of finding these videos on TikTok. I only recently learned that uh, this uh, that you can watch all. Or I'm sorry, you can watch four seasons of this show on Peacock. Mm -hmm. For those, uh, let me backtrack real quick. For those unfamiliar, WWE story time is where you've got you know WWE wrestlers and personalities recounting like these crazy stories of, of you know their their time in. in um, their time on stage, yeah. touring, like road stories, road yeah. stories. Yeah, but it's given an animated, uh, in an animated yeah, form. <laughs> I don't, I couldn't find who the the animated studio is that that does it all. But they are excellent. If anything, they elevate those stories to uh, to another level. Like they they work, they make it unique, right? Like they're mm -hmm. not following pace for pace every single part of the story. Like they're throwing in their own jokes and making it their own. So it's it's fascinating, man. I have learned so much about wrestling from these videos. And I've been uh, just entertained so much uh, from these quick little, you know, five, sometimes 10 minute stories. I think the longest ones are like maybe 10, 12. Yeah. But for the most part, they're like under five minutes. My two favorite um, that, that come to mind that I have saved is a story where Mark or Mike Henry. Who? Mike, is it Mike Henry? Mark, Mark, Henry. Mark Henry. Sorry, Mark Henry. Mark Henry. My apologies. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not perfect yet. I'm not perfect. Mark, All right. Is where Mark Henry is talking about working out with, with Vince McMahon in the oh gym for hours on end yeah. to mm -hmm. the point that he couldn't wrestle the next day because he was cr his whole body was cramping mm -hmm. up and he had to go to the hospital. And Vince McMahon was like, you know, got a kick out of it because he planned it the whole time. He was like purposely trying to fucking get him sore, and even <laughs> though he was fucking debilitated too and handicapped. It was all worth it. I thought that was funny. And then I'll probably fuck up this name too. Bear with me. Kofi. Is it Kofi? Kofi, yeah. Yeah, Kofi. Kofi. Yeah. When Kofi Kingston tells this story about being challenged to, I forget the video game, but it was a fighting game, being challenged to a video game from his social media manager. And the prize was like this signed baseball card um, or baseball photo that the social media manager like cherished and mm. beating him and, and tearing it up in front of his face <laughs> and just like uh, embracing being the villain. Cause he was like, uh, he should have talked shit. He talked shit. He got dealt with. I'm telling you, <sighs> WWE story well, time. Is so funny. It fun. seems so out of character for him. He's such a, no, seems like such no, a absolutely, like, actually, actually, no? Ed, actually, Ed, um, they have their YouTube show, uh, up, up, down, down with like Austin Creed. Oh, I haven't watched too much of that. The CEO of Heal play, that? They play Tekken and he is the biggest of shit talkers. When he's on Tekken, <laughs> that's all he does is like I shit do. talk. So when he said it was a fighting game, I was like, is he the Street Fighter or Tekken? Because if it's Tekken, of course he's going to mop the floor with him because like that's one of his games, man. It's so funny because you think you're like, hey, these guys are super nice. No, they are talking the <laughs> utmost of shit it, yeah. to but one He's another, never been bro. a heel. That too. He's never been a that's, heel in wrestling. No, but that is literally how he. you see him. Well, actually, no, New Day has Well, I guess New Day had heel. Yeah, New, has, New Day has been heels. Uh, but it's like that's true Kofi. Like, he's still a sweetheart, but, like, don't put him in front of the sticks, bro, because he's going to embarrass you. <laughs> yeah. And he'll be like, because he'll be like, you know what? They call me Mr. Got Your Ass. Like, that's exactly what he calls himself. <laughs> it's the greatest thing, man. Oh, man. Oh, my God. I haven't God. watched that in a while. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I, recommend so, WWE, so I recommend WWE Storytime to anyone that is, is wrestling curious or just looking for uh, – funny ass clips of like real life encounters and, and stories I, I yeah it's on peacock like i said i think four seasons on peacock but there's plenty of clips on tiktok floating around uh sticking to a sports theme uh you know i'm, I'm out here trying to earn a, a bra you know i'm out here trying to i'm out here trying to get brownie points from a shaggy this episode <laughs> this next one uh, I've, I, you know, during the break, I had time to actually like watch shit on Netflix. <laughs> so these next two are Netflix, but this next one is a sports one, and that is the documentary movie called "The Redeem Team" on Netflix. It follows the story of the 2008 uh, men's uh, basketball team and how the Redeem mm -hmm. Team uh, basically had to follow up and, and make amends from the uh, uh, from the loss from the 2004 men's uh, basketball team. Even though that team was just as stacked as you know the 2008, you know, Allen Iverson. Carmelo Anthony, LeBron James, like huge names 
in basketball at that time failed to beat um uh, was it they Spain? Were trash. Uh, no, no, it was Greece. They they uh, 2004's team got beat by Greece mm. and it just embarrassed, like just embarrassed America, right? And that was supposed to be our game. The NBA, you know, what's his name on the Greek team though? The oh, I can't say his name. I know Giannis, who you're talking about. Giannis, Giannis, wasn't, yeah. Giannis wasn't around. Uh, it wasn't around no. that then. Okay. No, not no. in 2002 because right. he's like younger. He's younger. Oh, than he's us young. Then, so That's right. Nah. Never mind. Yeah. Never mind. So the redeem team. I'm trying to think of other Greek players. I can't think of it. <laughs> yeah, no. Nah, Ronnie you're, you're Cycli. About, he's way older. Yeah, way older, bro. Like, nah. It's those are he's just a DJ those now. are just dudes. Those are just dudes that were ballers. <laughs> yeah. So the doc basically follows the following uh, Olympics uh, NBA team, which was a much older um, and you know definitely in their prime: D Wade, Carmelo, LeBron trying to get retribution for that loss and, and Kobe also, you know, the addition of Kobe. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe this was the last uh, movie or doc or, or inter- set of interviews that Kobe Bryant had did. So there's a lot mm. of footage of Kobe talking about this and, you know, reliving those stories. And it's, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's a prime example of why I love learning about sports through documentaries such as 30 for 30s. It's like seeing the human aspect and seeing like the, the person behind, um, you know, behind these very famous uh, athletes. Like, it's a very touching story, very inspiring. Uh, so I recommend the Redeem team for anyone that, you know, that's looking for that vibe. And uh, a special champion right here. I finally got to watch the uh, Bullet Train. That, that's on Netflix. Oh, right yes, now. sir. Yes, sir. It came out uh, August uh, in theaters. I kind of beat myself up for missing it. But it's on Same. Netflix now. It stars Brad Pitt. You got Aaron Taylor Johnson. You got Bad Bunny is in it. Uh, uh, Joey King. You stop right there. You stop right there. Bad money. You can't do no better than that, dog. Actually, I feel like you can't with these next names. Mike Shannon, Zazzy Beats, and my guy Brian Tyree Henry are all yeah. in this movie. I mean, it is fucking hella stacked. And the best part is that they're all playing very quirky and deadly assassins who are trapped together on this bullet train by fate, but also outside forces that, that want to see them all kill each other. Extremely fucking fun movie so fun man and I, i'm here for brad pitt doing all of these roles and movies where it's like you just get a different shade of, of brad pitt awesome movie i highly recommend it if you got netflix this is from the same dude who uh directed deadpool 2 oh Ooh. it is okay that makes yeah, sense like, I'm, I'm gonna say i don't want to spoil anything but once we stop i'm gonna, I'm gonna point some out to you all right oh, yeah. bet. because oh. the comedy reminded me of, of deadpool it's very like uh, um yeah it's just a similar kind of comedy the, the, the level of sarcasm and wit is what reminded me of Deadpool then. Okay, I'm glad you said that. But that is my champions in Shortbox Nation. It is now your turn to chime in. If you got a worthwhile champion pick that you feel that we and the rest of the Shortbox Nation might enjoy, whether it be a movie, a comic book, a video game, a documentary, whatever it is, share it with us, all right? Tell us if you try out any of the recommendations we share today, all right? We'd love to hear if any of those resonated with you and get some of your feedback. Hit us up on Instagram, Twitter, or email. Gents, uh, normally I, I look to Ashley to, to sign off the show by giving us, you know, what she thought was the biggest takeaway or, or lesson or parting words for the listeners. I want to toss this one out and see if you guys all agree with me. I feel like the mm-hmm. biggest takeaway and lesson that our listeners should leave this episode with is don't start no shit with James Gunn and there won't be no shit with James Gunn. All right. Yep. Are we all in agreement with that? And hire yeah, somebody man. to do the snowplow. <laughs> Boy, that one takeaway. I learned what a snow, I was today years old to know. I learned what a snowplow snow is. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's the biggest takeaway for us Floridians, boys. Like, whoa, I know what a snowplow is. It's a tank. That's a good that bitch is monstrous. <laughs> All right. Shaggy thought it was a push broom. The Bro, rice. for real, though. <laughs> <laughs> so you pushed it. Yo, southern ass <laughs> out, out of the south. Right? Like a lawnmower. Get your ass out the south. <laughs> Bro, for real, dog. That shit crazy. I was like, yo, that's what that is? Yo! <laughs> and closing, though, Shaggy, brother, thank you so much for hopping on with us, man. So glad to have you back on the short box. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I'll have a link to your podcast, the cinema villains podcast in the show notes. I highly suggest if you enjoyed, uh, Shaggy on this show, then you will absolutely love him on his own podcast where he is free to drink and get drunk as much as he likes, Mm -hmm. uh, with his homeboy, Jose, as they review some of the best cinema villains in the history of movies. All right. That'll be linked in the show notes. Check out their podcast for me. And there you have it. All right. Thank, Thank you for hanging out with us this week. 
If you enjoyed this episode, do us a favor and help spread the word and share this episode with a friend or recommend it to someone you know that loves comics as much as we do. If you're feeling extra generous, consider leaving us a five-star rating review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Look, you're probably listening to this episode on one of those apps anyway, and it won't cost you anything to leave a couple of nice words so no, so new people know this is a good time. Next week, we'll be recording our Calvin and Hobbes slash Bill Watterson appreciation episode. So come back next week for that if you're a fan of Calvin and Hobbes or comic strips. And if that's too long for you to wait, you can come hang out with me and Drew as we flip through this month's previews catalog, looking for the best comics, toys, and merch hitting shops soon. That is a bonus episode available exclusively on our Patreon community. It's a good one, all right? If you aren't a patron of the, if you aren't a member of the Patreon, I promise it's well worth the very small fee of admission we charge you to join. In return, you'll get a bunch. Uh, sorry, in return, you'll get access to a bunch of bonus content, videos, extra episodes and more just go to patreon.com slash the short box to sign up or smash one of those helpful links in the show notes until next week take care of yourselves have a great day and please continue to make mine and your short box we'll talk to you soon peace